Uh, the first time when we muted the idea of uh, Beni Rebet movement, of course, the philosophy behind uh, Beni Rebet movement was that for such a time, we have to reflect on our individual contribution to building of Beni State. In the years that have passed since the creation of the state, 1976, what has been our collective effort to raise the standard of living that we met? Has governance been fair to the masses for this period? Has there been any form of agitation of alienation? Yes, of course. Because Bernie State is a collaboration of tribes, the thieves, the Idoma, the Igede, the Tulo, the Nymphon, the Aquaire, the Afia, we are all a mix, but zone A and B predominantly are of thief extraction, and zone C is an extraction of the Idoma nation, which includes Igede, Ufia, Aquaire, and the other smaller tribes were all of Idoma nation. But since 1976, after the creation of Benin State, unlike all the f states that were fragmented out of Benin Plateau, Plateau, part of Taraba State, and Nazarro State, what we have seen in those states is that because of ethnic coloration, leadership of the states have migrated from one tribe to another seamlessly, and which creates the feeling of ownership by all the tribes that conglomerate to become those states. Unfortunately, in Benin State, despite this coloration, leadership has remained static, being rotated within the families, within the team nation. So, when we form Benin Rebirth Movement, the philosophy was that we should think like the other states that fragmented out of Benin Plateau. The Idoma nation should be part and parcel of leadership. If not, after 45 years getting to 46, it will look as if we have been systematically sidelined and it does not augur well for equity, fair play in a political participation of this kind. So when we form the, the idea for this agitation, we christened it being a rebirth movement, that there should be a rethinking by all the constituents of Benue to say enough of the old ways. There is a baptism of inclusiveness that has come. So, having realized that, we expect that in the next dispensation, come 2023, the Dumas that have never tested or superintended over the affairs of, of Benin State should be exclusively given the opportunity to do it. And this is the philosophy of Bernie Rebert movement. It is not a philosophy that is only line and sinker by the Zone C alone. It is a philosophy that has been embraced by very progressive minds in Zone A and B. So we are cutting across the whole state. And our advocacy is not, or the struggle is not combative. It is an appeal. Because the demography, when compared to the C, we are demographically disadvantaged. And when you talk about politics, the issue of number matters a lot. However, in civilized nations, where the majority have the vote, 
the minorities always will have a say. And that is why advanced nations do not undermine smaller units that are constraint of a whole. And this is where we are agitating. So when we created Benin Rebirth Movement, we did a roadmap. And if we want to sell this kind of idea and ideology and new philosophy, we must approach the Chief Secretary Officer of the State because he needs to know what is happening within his domain. So we, the group of Benin Rebirth Movement, the hierarchy, very small group. We were a few professionals like retired chief judge of the state, few retired generals, few professors in a very small group that way. We presented the roadmap to the governor early this year. Now, we have gone around the whole zones, zone A, B and C and have even gone to the different paramount leaders, the Ochidoma and the Tortive. We presented our roadmaps. We presented our roadmap to the socio-cultural group of the Unzo Tiv, and we have done the same to the Ochetoha Kidoma. And all people within the entire Benue state, all the segments, different levels of political units. We haven't gone completely, but at the headship of all these groupings, we have approached them for a rethink. So, what we did, because Benue Rebel Movement is not a political platform, because I am the leader of that platform, and I'm not, I don't belong to any political party. And I was very careful in selection of my team. The team is completely apolitical, but we are pursuing a political program that will bring peace and unity in the state. And that is what we've done. We are able to put the PDP, APC, and all the opinion builders within the C, including the cultural union, the youth, the women group, and we put all of them together and came in mass on that day to present a common cause. It was not a political party coming to make a case or making a request. It was a people, a group of entire people who feel have been neglected or in, from inclusion in the happenings politically of the state. I was a leader, I was of the whole group of Zone C that led a request or a plea to the governor to talk to all other political parties and opinion holders or the levers, the holders of political powers within the state to relinquish voluntarily leadership to Zone C at this time so that we will see ourselves as part and parcel of Benin State. All the five ruling families in zones A and B have produced at least one elected governor for the state, while none of the states of the units of your concerns in zone C has produced nothing. Human development, when you undermine the value of man, that he cannot aspire to the highest level, you demean his stature and a lot of things can come out of those negative traits. Because when you put a bar or a ceiling that one section of the state cannot go beyond, it doesn't augur well for political maturity and development. And that is why we presented our case on that day. And I think that was the greatest day in my life. It was the day that the entire Idoma nation 
came together in one voice, irrespective of the dialects that we speak, but that we marched to the government house to present a common case under no particular political party, but all opinion molders and movers in Zonsi. If you sit and agree that, well, let it be Zonsi, then Zonsi can bring one person, whether from PDP or APC, who will adopt that. And I think if we do that, we'll reduce a lot of tension and challenge. I can give you some assurance. Dr. Otom, he is a man of destiny. He emphatically said that for him to be a governor, he believes that any other person can be a governor. That is how humble he made a presentation to us. One thing that is obvious is that he is a fighter. He is a man who fights for the minority rights. He's, I look at him as a modern J.S. Tucker of the old Middle Belt Union that fought for the minority rights alongside people like Solomon La and Lot of blessed memory. You can see that even in the face of militia attacks on Bene communities today, he has been frontal, crying out without fear that Bene needs to be protected. He is a man that is about to make history. He doesn't need, as a patriot, he does not need to think as a team man when he's taking the right decision. I don't need to know his body language. But I know that he believes in God. And he fears God. And the word isolation is isolation. The word fairness is fairness. And the word injustice is injustice. He does not need to be afraid of a people when he's on the right course of history. Bene State cannot develop if there's no inclusiveness. Bene State will have apathy when there's no fairness. The distinguished senator from Zonsi was very clear in his presentation to his executive governor when he had time to speak to him. That yes, we anticipate that you say you are going to provide a level playground. But how can you guarantee a level playground when you are bringing a team like the Super Eagles to play with the primary school team? Yes, there's a level playground, but the one thing is full of stars, while the other team is full of amateurs. And what does, what, what does that mean? He was relating directly that the superstars are the ones coming with a higher demography. Population. So you cannot say you are organizing a contest for level playground for a big number of people with a smaller quantity of people in a political context. So we are not talking about level playground at this time. It's conception. What we, the C people, need from His Excellency is to play the card well, to make history. 
identify the kind of leaders that you anticipate will, will deliver from Zone C. And let's push them. One or two of them to compete in PDP. One or two of them encourage the opposing party to do the same. So in that way, that is the only way an Idoma man or the same person can become a governor in Benin State. Until the constitutional review which I laid on behalf of Zon C to make a case in just that constitutionally we should be legalized to rotate governorship within the senatorial zones. If that is legalized and reviewed in the ongoing constitutional review, of course it means that Zone C can't ever produce a governor. We believe that the president governor or Tom is the midwife for such historical event to take place. So we encourage him to go behind history and make a case for the minority right in Benesta. It is not an issue of my tribe against the other tribe. Now, will the Zone C leaders put their heads together for the struggle? Yes. In the past, there has never been a platform of this nature. Like the governor energized my quality and my position on that day. He is amazed that I could lead a platform like this to gather everybody together in one place. He was also amazed that I have never shown an interest to be a contender to the throne. And that is me. Because as a military officer, I have been given opportunity by God to go to close to the highest level of my military career. And coming back on retirement, it is only wise for me to be a unifier of my people the entire Benway. I feel terrible and sad that two tribes will be warring politically and protecting clannish interests. Because where I'm coming from in the military, we do not know the Hausa against the Ibo or Ibo against the Yoruba or the smaller tribes against each other. We are united people, irrespective of religion. We go to the mess to do the things that the military will do. Because if the military is not coercive, we cannot win a war. A military commander, a Christian, will lead both Christians and Muslims to war front. Esprit de corps the belief in a nation state called Nigeria. So coming back home, I should not be a tool to divide my people. I should be the used, I should be used as a tool to unite the entire tribes of Benue to think one Benue, one vision. And I believe that it is only with that that the best materials can be gained to lead us. We have resources, we have natural resources, we have the strength. We are courageous people with all these attributes. I believe that if we galvanize all these attributes together and the void of ethnic chauvinism will eventually become one of the leading states in northern Nigeria because we have everything to feed the nation but 
myopic thinking based on ethnic alliances will destroy Benin State if we are not careful. I see myself as a unifier. I do not have political ambition and I have said it 1,000 times because I don't think that is my calling. My calling is a fighter to unify people. <laughs>